Now, there has always been much speculation about the relationship between the king and his late mother, uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Well, uh, one person who knows a thing or two about that is Roy Biographer. Her new book has just been released, My Mother and I. It's the inside story of the king and his late mother, Queen Elizabeth II. And we're joined by Ingrid this morning at the Royal Biographer. Good morning to you. Um, look, I believe that the Queen was upset by the criticisms that, that King Charles levelled at her about her parenting style, but do you think he had a point? Was she quite a cold mother? Well, she was a mother from a different generation, and I think that Charles was longing to be hugged by his mother, but he was only ever really given that kind of affection from his nannies. But remember that, well, I'll, t I'll remind you that... Um, uh, Princess Elizabeth only had Charles till the, he was age four before she became queen. And then virtually uh, uh, her children were taken away from her, not literally, but uh, mentally they were because she was so busy being queen. She was only 26 and she entered this world uh, in 1952 of, you know, such a man's world. And basically looking after the children went very much on the back burner. but. That was fairly much the norm for those aristocratic families in those days. They saw their children in the morning and then they saw them again in the evening. Was it, though? Because when I think of Queen Elizabeth II and her own childhood, she had a very happy childhood. And her father famously used to tuck her into bed uh, every night. And, and I wonder if the, the coldness was almost the influence from Prince Philip, who himself had had a sort of traumatic childhood. And perhaps his influence and the selection of the school that Charles went to came from him a little bit. Well, Philip was very influential, but what people sort of don't realise, why should they, is that Philip loved babies and he loved little children. So I think he, he was very strict, you know, as Charles began to grow up. And then, then he sort of put his foot down and said, he's going to Cheam, which Charles hated. He's going to Gordonstone, which Charles hated, because he wanted to make a man of his son. And Charles was a really sensitive little boy and wasn't sort of the kind of boisterous child that Philip hoped for. Anne was, but Charles wasn't. Mm. Mm. So where does that leave us in term, Ingrid, of the relationship between Charles mm. and his mum? Was she his mum or was she the queen? She was the queen, but in later life, she was his mum. Um, because she, she, I think honestly it was, he was about, he was almost in his, his 50s, 60s, when the Queen sort of actually said to him she was very proud of him. But it was really through his work with, with his Prince's Trust, as it was then. And she just thought he's done such a marvelous job with, you know, with these uh, underprivileged kids and the inner cities. And he's really caring about the youth of this country in a way that, made her very proud. But it took a, a while for her to show this to him. And do you think that his own experience and, and I suppose the lack, the lack of affection that he, he reported or describes has affected the way he's parented his own children? And I know Diana had a big role in trying to be hands-on and very involved in the boys, but it seems Charles has taken that on board as well. I think Charles was very, very close to his, his children, especially Harry, actually, because yeah. William was very much, he wanted to be with mummy, but Harry loved doing things with Charles. He loved, you know, get, learn, going into the gardens at Highgrove and learning about plants, and he loved the military, loved horses, and as soon as he was able to, Charles would take him on, you know, little, little trips he could do with him. And on one occasion, Harry even went dressed up in sort of military uniform. So Charles was an indulgent father, but when his relationship with Diana broke down so badly, Diana's uh, weapon, if you like, which is very understandable, all mothers would use this, was to take the children. Charles would organise to take them to polo and she'd take them shopping. So... There were, there were uh, that Sorry. was her real strength. There were a lot of women uh, around that family. Diana, you mentioned there. There was the Queen Mother. There was uh, the Queen's sister, Princess Margaret, um, as well. Did they have any influence on him? 
Well, the Queen Mother had an enormous influence on him. Uh, as he said in his later years, you know, she taught him everything about opera. She taught him about poetry. She taught him about Shakespeare, all of which you can see is so much part of his character now. And he completely adored her, always. Um, that's almost a phrase I think you could use towards Camilla, is it not? He completely adored her, always. I, I think you could. I mean, not always, always, but I think he he loved Camilla from the moment he met her. Um, but Camilla and he, Charles went into the Navy and Camilla went into the arms of Andrew Parker Bowles. So it wasn't the right timing. Mm. Um, but eventually it was never the right timing, but, but eventually it was. And I think... Mm. That is the great, in a way, it's a great love story. And, and she is, Miller is the one that you feel is, is strength now. Yeah, supporting him through this awful illness. Um, and we see Prince William cutting a lonely figure. He was at the BAFTAs last night, walking the red carpet without, of course, the Princess of Wales. Um, lots of speculation about whether or not there could be a role for Prince Harry to come back and support his brother as the sort of slimmed down monarchy is looking a little bit skinny suddenly. I, th I don't quite, that story was what I would call a bit of a flyer because Prince Harry never actually said that he hoped he could come back and support his brother. He just said, I think that uh, the, the American uh, ABC, they, they put a little spin on that and it made it sound like Harry had said that he wanted to be an American citizen, said that he wanted to come back and support his father. He did, he wanted to support his father, but he never ever said anything about coming back as a working role because he knows perfectly well it wouldn't work. Is it and, true? And he wouldn't be wanted. Mm. Yeah, is it true that Charles has slept or does sleep in an oxygen tent? So I understand. Well, as a child, he was very um, sickly with sinusitis. And in those in the 50s, you know, they, it wasn't, you know, treatment wasn't as good as it was now. And so he's always suffered. Um, so uh, he does uh, sleep in an oxygen tent. Now, whether he does every night or not, I do not know. Yeah. But it's certainly something that would relieve his problems. Maybe it's something a lot of us should be doing. Mm. I think you're right. Uh, Ingrid Seward, lovely talking to yes. you. Ingrid's book, Thank My Mother and I, much. Thank You, is available now. It's the inside story of lovely. the King and the Late Queen.